curiosity is not sufficient need to know. So it, it appears that um, the president is given a core story. I'm not sure how much that it involves. And like every other issue, they know anything that's classified, don't touch it, leave it alone. There's other people working on it. If something happens, if something breaks out, UFO crash, they can't cover up, then they got to bring him in. Then he needs to know. You need to know what's happened here. You need to know what's actually going on so you can answer the questions. And then they tell him how to answer the questions. Grant Cameron has been answering these questions for over 30 years. His work helps connect the dots that link our nation's leaders with our country's ufological timeline. His interest in the topic began in May of 1975. It was in Carmen, Manitoba, about 25 miles north of the U.S.-Canada border, where he was a personal witness to what became known locally as the Charlie Red Star sightings. Over the following 18 months, Cameron experienced many additional sightings, which he continued to photograph along with interviewing hundreds of witnesses who were involved. More recently, Cameron's research interests have turned to the involvement and actions of the various United States presidents and the UFO phenomenon. His websites, presidentialufo.com and hillaryclintonufo.net, both explore past leaders' involvement with the UFO phenomenon. Cameron filed the Freedom of Information Act, which led to the discovery that Hillary Clinton had in fact received a book on extraterrestrial life from Lawrence Rockefeller and witnesses have maintained that UFOs were likely discussed at that meeting. One of my Freedom of Information Act requests was for all photographs um, taken of Hillary at the ranch and all the Hil photographs taken of Bill at the ranch because they, they catalog everything. So they had about maybe, I can't remember, it was 35 or 40 photographs of Hillary and you're basically just looking at little tiny images and you're trying to order. So I ordered about three images of her being greeted by Rockefeller, them walking down a trail at, at the ranch, and then one coming across a bridge. So when it, it, it came out, we noticed that Hillary was carrying a book. And this went on for about two years. I put it out across the UFO community. I said, can someone tell me what book she's carrying? Because there's no doubt she would have just been, in, in the first photograph, she doesn't have the book. And suddenly she's carrying this book. So Rockefeller gave her the book. You can take the part of the book you can see with Hillary and the other, uh, the actual book, you can see it was a book written by Paul Davies about the psychological implications of extraterrestrial intelligence uh, interacting with Earth. What you have is a high-level CIA person who basically has been in the CIA for 35 years and is now in a contract to the CIA for seven years was the second most powerful person inside the CIA to speak publicly on behalf of the CIA. And to me, it was just unforgivable that he could come out and basically say that Roswell was real and the proof was there and that no one, no one would pick up on the story and do it. Last year, on June 23rd, in an interview on Coast to Coast AM, former CIA official Chase Brandon claimed that, quote, there was a craft from beyond this world that crashed at Roswell. End quote. Brandon claimed that while he was working for the CIA, he entered a vaulted room with restricted access at CIA headquarters in Langley, Virginia, called the Historical Intelligence Collection. Brandon stated that he had found a box that had the word Roswell on it. He told Lee Spiegel of the Huffington Post that, quote, I took the box down, lifted up the lid, rummaged around inside it, put the box back on the shelf and said, my God, it really did happen. The story dominated the internet for a few days and Cameron immediately began to research its veracity. He produced several thorough reports and interview notes regarding the intricacies of the case. His measure of healthy skepticism provided alternative views to the situation, particularly about the contents of the box that Brandon mentions. Cameron writes that the materials would be, quote, compartmentalized on a need-to-know basis. The photos with the photo people, metal with the metallurgists, and so on. Each person working on the crash will only be given access to what he or she needs to do their job. At no time will you have all the material in a Roswell box where numerous people can see what everyone else is doing. That this was planned and it was part of a, what I think is a uh, disclosure situation where the core story of what's going on is being leaked to the public. 
Also this year, Cameron reported on an interview with Russian Prime Minister Dmitry Medvedev, who was asked by Russians RENTV. После прекращения полномочий, соответственно, эти папки передаются новому президенту. Более подробную информацию на эту тему вы можете получить, посмотрев известный хроникально-документальный фильм «Люди в черном». Вышло несколько версий. Сколько их среди нас? Сколько их среди нас, рассказывать не буду, потому что это может вызвать панику. The film Medvedev referenced is a Russian UFO documentary produced by RENTV, the same network that conducted the interview. His quote triggered Cameron to create a comprehensive timeline of updates along with noted people involved, like UFO researcher Bruce McAfee, who reported that, I was interviewed back in November by a person working for RENTV and doing a documentary on UFOs. This report helped lend more credence to Medvedev's statement and place the quote in better context. Cameron also tracked down and posted extended interview cuts along with a more thorough analysis of the translation. I think it had more to do with the network, uh, but Medvedev just basically said it. I don't think he was joking, but you really can't prove it until you get more on the story. So we, we ran it as far as we could and uh, now we'll see whether this thing appears in this new documentary being UFO documentary being done by the network that asked the question. Currently, Cameron is working on writing several monographs, including one that looks at a possible disclosure pattern to explain the many actions of the U.S. government relating to UFOs. He is also sorting through almost 100 Freedom of Information requests directed at the Clinton Presidential Library concerning UFO-related actions and policies inside the Clinton administration. Grant Cameron's work continues to be an invaluable element in the construction of our country's ufological timeline. His more than 25 trips to the National Archives, along with his diligent analysis, represent a dedication that resonates through his work. His research, writing, and lectures have opened the doors and shed light on many of the enigmas that otherwise may have lain dormant. I now look back and think that maybe the sighting I had in 1975 wasn't accidental that I was meant to be there, I was meant to do this. I believe that, but also to me, every, everything in life is sort of a game. And uh, I look at life as you're given certain things that you're supposed to do, and you do them the best you can. The idea that knowledge is not used is sin. And to me, it's a game, and I intend to try to win the game. So I play it as hard as I can. The same as I, my son was a very good hockey player, I encouraged him to go out there and do the best you can, use your talent, and I believe it's the same here, that to me, I, I just couldn't sit still. I have to say what I know. I have to push uh, whenever I think there's an answer there and get it out to whoever, to whoever is listening. But it's a drive, it's a game to me, but it's something that started back in 1975 because my friends just went on with their life and I didn't. I just basically, when I had my sighting, just basically fell off the end of the earth and I've been chasing this thing ever since. This is why the 2013 International UFO Congress is awarding Grant Cameron as our Researcher of the Year.